Well, uh, for anyone who knows me, I can write a shader and I've been known to do some lighting design, but putting paint to canvas is definitely well outside my skill sets. And I think with something like that, even I could be an artist. Uh, next up, we have volumetric human teleportation uh, by a team at uh, the USC Institute for Creative Technologies and uh, Pinscreen. Uh, contributors are uh, Rulong Li, uh, Kyle Oshesky, uh, Yulang uh, Zhu, uh, Shun Suk uh, Seto, uh, Zhang Wang, and Hao Li. It'll be presented by Rulong uh, Li, Kyle Oshesky, uh, Yulang Zhu, and uh, Zhang Wang. Uh, so uh, Rulong is currently a second year PhD student at Division and Graphics Lab of USC. Advised by Professor Hao Li, his research interests lie in the intersection uh, of computer vision and graphics, especially in representation of uh, learning um, of the human body and face. Uh, Kyle Oshesky is a PhD in computer science at the University of Southern California, working in the geometric capture lab under Professor Hao Li. Um, his research focuses on real-time facial expressions tracking, particularly using techniques suited to emerging platforms such as virtual and augmented reality, has been published in venues such as SIGGRAPH, SIGGRAPH Asia, ICCB, CVPR, and he's uh, a former senior software engineer from NVIDIA, and as a student has been a research intern at Oculus, Adobe, Microsoft Research, and SNAP. He was also a recipient of the SNAP Research Fellowship. Uh, Yulong Zhu is currently a second year PhD student, uh, also in computer science at the University of Southern California, um, also working in the vision and graphics lab with Professor Hao Li. His research is, interests are in computer graphics and computer vision, especially 3D geometric human reconstruction and 2D visual human understanding. And finally, Zhang Wang is a PhD student in computer science at USC, focusing on computer vision and graphics. Uh, his most, uh, um, most uh, research effort has been focused around volumetric reconstruction for virtual humans, combining geometry processing and deep learning. His thesis on reconstructing a closed human body in the wild with great detail for minimal input on cameras. Okay, thanks for that introdu introduction. I'm Kyle, and today we're going to introduce uh, the first system for real-time volumetric teleportation, or monoport for short. So to motivate, motivate this, just think for a second about the way we're communicating right now. I'm streaming to you online through this webcam. You're watching me on this 2D display. Now, this is all right, but I mean, after several months of this, you kind of get the impression that um, this is really kind of lacking some really immersive social elements. So you might ask yourself, is there some way that we can actually interact more socially in some sort of a safe, more compelling, really more immersive environment, like say an online virtual environment, like the ones they have in games like Second Life or uh, World of Warcraft. Now, there are AR and VR displays that allow for really like compelling ways to traverse and render these scenes uh, in these environments. But what they're currently lacking is the ability to rapidly create and render um, complicated 3D content like the human body, which you really need for sort of immersive telepresence applications. So basically we can see 3D data, but what we can't really do is actually um, create it quite easily. So that's where Monoport comes in. Now here you can see on the main screen, our main the main demo of our app. You can see there Yulong is doing a variety of poses while he stands in front of just a standard Logitech webcam. And on the right, you can see on the top, the uh, captured uh, inferred texture of his body. And on the bottom, the geometry with like, the normals. And you can see as it's rotating, as he moves around and does different poses, it automatically adapts to his new pose and even infers regions that can't be seen by that single camera. Now, there have been approaches to do real-time um, performance capture and 3D reconstruction in the past, but they've had limitations like requiring multiple calibrated cameras, um, which isn't really tractable for standard settings or requiring this carefully pre-captured template of the subject, which means you can't even do things like, say, change your clothes, alter your appearance, grow a beard, without having to go through some new calibration. Um, with our system, we actually allow for monocular performance capture without a template while performing real-time volumetric reconstruction and rendering. And again, this is just using commodity desktop hardware. Uh, it's using a simple Logitech webcam capturing him at SDs, so 640 by 480, using two NVIDIA GPUs to render and reconstruct in parallel. And uh, so this is sort of built as some work from last year that our lab introduced called PIFU, which can actually create an implicit representation of a person that then can then be rendered and reconstructed. But unfortunately, the volumetric reconstruction was really too slow to be used for these sort of real-time environments. Um, for this year, we accelerated this process using um, accelerated octree-based rendering and reconstruction algorithms, as well as new training techniques that make the system more robust to a variety of users like shapes, appearances, and all the different variations you see for like real performance capture. 
Um, so these traits really allow us to do a lot of interesting things. We'll kind of show off to you now. So um, Zeng, would you like to step in? Just switch places with you on for a sec. So because there's no template required, we can automatically switch the subjects. You see as Yulong steps out and Zeng steps in, the system automatically just calibrates to capturing him frame by frame. And you can see again, that infers the missing regions, follows his performance, captures both the geometry and the texture. And um, it also can even adapt to changes in his appearance. So Zeng, if you want to go ahead and just remove that hoodie you're wearing, you can see as he does that, it just dynamically adapts to how um, the, t the, the hoodie goes away. You can see his t-shirt now even capture a little bit of the geometry of the, the, the hoodie as he takes it off. Um, and again, just sort of adapt. So we don't really need to do any recalibration capturing of a template. We can also introduce things like props. So if you want to go ahead and like pick up that backpack nearby, you can handle like everyday objects in a way that some standard template with just the human body on it can't really handle. It's also robust to changes in the lighting. So you can kind of see how you long is just adding some sort of like brave style lighting effects there. It's maybe a little bit subtle, but the system is quite robust to all these different variations. And um, if you, you long, can you just step back in? So that covers the whole um, reconstruction and rendering thing I've described to you, but the thing you might be asking about is this whole teleportation thing, like how does that come in? So the idea is with this captured geometry and texture, we can actually teleport um, our subject into these new virtual environments. And to do that, we actually um, have introduced this, uh, or built this app that you can see right here. It's simply just kind of a lightweight iPad app, which automatically, once we capture the uh, geometry and uh, texture, we can stream that to this app. And then as the orientation of that iPad changes, we can change the point of view, kind of like you would if you're like, say, navigating through some virtual environment here. And because this is some arbitrary virtual environment, we can even do things like change the background. So like you want to set change the setting um, where long, if you want to go ahead and maybe just toggle through a few different backgrounds, you can see how we can choose like different environments to put them in. So you can imagine this could be anything from your just sort of boring old office that you're maybe kind of missing at this point. Um, or something like, say, like a World of Warcraft fantasy world setting. And interestingly, one thing we noticed when we were um, experimenting with this system is that even though it's only trained to capture one subject at a time, it can even actually capture multiple people during inference. So uh, Zeng, if you'd like to just go ahead and step back in next to Yulong. You can see again as Zeng steps in. Um, stepping in there? Yeah. So basically, as he steps in, it automatically starts capturing their geometry and texture again, streaming it back to the iPad app. And once again, it adapts to their performance, their like changes in pose of the, the camera, their appearance, like their motion, all that's being captured and streamed dynamically to this iPad app. So uh, in conclusion, in this age of social distancing, where I think we're all getting really hungry for some more like immersive social contact, that's very safe. I think that something like this is going to be like really important both in the near term and probably in the long term for like telepresence where you want to talk to your relatives on the other side of the world without having to get on a plane, even when that's technically safe. Um, so in conclusion, that's Monoport. If you're interested, you can check out the QR code there. If you look up us up online, you'll find there's actually an ECCV paper being presented this week on the kind of background algorithms for this. And uh, we also just released the code for this demo if you'd like to try it out yourself. So uh, once again, that's Monoport. I'm Kyle and uh, thanks for your time.